Alrighty, so I did a combat, um, and I'm just going to go through it, um, and uh, I, I would like to explain what, what's happening and how far deviant, I guess, I am, I'm going from the official uh, Der Weltkrieg rules, but I'm loving the narrative, and uh, I'm sticking with it. Um, yeah, it just makes a lot of sense to me, and you're going to see why in a minute, or hopefully see why in a minute, or why I'm doing what I'm doing. Alrighty. So what ended up happening, I think I was mentioning that I did want to take this position, but I was a little worried that I would have to move uh, these guys in here, actually the 10th Infantry Division from here to here, to amount the uh, 12 strength points fully supplied attack. But then I was like, okay, you, I'm leaving a vacant spot, but I just gotta, I just gotta go with it sometimes. So I moved Pleve across uh, the Virps River here. He had five supply points. Uh, and uh, did the uh, the entire um, uh, fully supplied here. So that's uh, and he had five supply points. Uh, cost one uh, one supply point per four attacking strength points down to two. Alrighty. And uh, so I went into so we got all three here. I'll tell you I'll tell you who they are very quickly. And then I'll tell you what uh, what I'm doing. And then you're gonna I mean and you're gonna see. I guess what where I've started to deviate. So uh, here's the 38th Infantry Division. That's the 3rd Infantry Division and that's the 10th Infantry Division. And they're going up against these guys. They have t only two strength points. Uh, and it's weird. I just, I guess you could say that when you're going to, well, I'm going to explain it out here, hopefully. Um, a kind of, a part of me feels like uh, the Russians caught the Austro-Germans with their pants down, which is quite interesting because I've got uh, Berevich over here who's like a demigod for me. Uh, you know, the Berevich dictum and the whole, uh, um, the whole nine yards. It's, um, you know, I'm getting me started with that. I, got a, I made a bookmark for him, for Christ's sakes. Anyways, so here we go. We, made the, we did the attack. You didn't see the die roll. doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the CRT stuff. Um, I want to get into what's what, what's going to end up happening, and you're going to see how much of a deviation I've gone to. Roll to six. Did two hits. Uh, there's no... Uh, yes, they got a minus one on their die roll adjustment because this, of this broken terrain. I want, if I went... I just went with it. Uh, there wasn't much difference between the minus one and, the, and no die roll modifier, to be honest with you. The, uh, it's interesting to see... It. Well, maybe I'll take a look. I'll show you the CRT, and you can see what I mean. Hold on here. I just thought, you know what, let's go for it. Yeah, you can see that. So here's the 12, and I was like, with well, a minus one or a one, or, or, or no modifiers, like, you know what, let's just go with it. And um, so, anyways, like I said about why I feel they've caught the, sorry, just taking a sip, Austro-Germans by, or, or their pants down, is one of the reasons why the Austro-Germans brought in, well, it was Austro-Hungarians, and then brought in a German brigade, which happens to be the German 22nd Landwehr uh, Brigade, and they're along with the Austro-Hungarian KUK 110th Landwehr Brigade, both one strength points each. The whole point of having the Germans in there was to bolster uh, the retreat factor. For Austro-Germans, uh, oh, sorry, for Austro-Hungarians and Russians and all that stuff, it's one third uh, the amount of hits they would have taken. Well, if they only have two strength points, I'm only gonna like, what in the world am I supposed to do? I can't, I'm, you know what I mean? You're not gonna get less than a half of a hit if I get a hit. So they're always gonna be forced to retreat. However, if they had three strength points with that German uh, guy, I would have needed two. Uh, uh, two hits to uh, to force a retreat, not the one. That's that's the whole beauty. Because with the Germans, it's one half, and they and that ability is uh, transferred uh, into whatever unit they're in uh, with. It's awesome. Done. Okay. So now they're forced to retreat. Now here's the kicker for me. Is there, this is where I said I'm going to go into the deviation land. Now what ends up happening in retreat? Am I going to go through the whole uh, nine yards with it? Uh, maybe I should, but I'm a, I just don't feel like it. Uh, sorry, is um, normally you would say, okay, then it's like to the nearest, uh, actually, maybe I will read a little tiny bit. Oh, almighty. 
I just always think I'm gonna do like a half decent video and then I just go off into Wonderland. Jesus Christ. Anyways, well I do have to grab the rules for a little bit because it took me a, well I actually did this like, I did this combat and I made a video of this this morning and I went, whoa, you're getting into col uh, column attacks and I just don't understand this uh, properly. Anyways, what it gets down to for the, uh, I'm not gonna, what it gets down to for the retreat is they mention constantly um, supplying headquarters, okay? Remember, I'm like off into um, um, connecting uh, units to certain cores and all this stuff, and I am still uh, don't want uh, each armies to talk to each other properly. Even though I'm starting to uh, read up later on just early days about the Brusilov Offensive and whatnot and starting to find out that people are starting to uh, clue in that uh, the communication, back, uh, like uh, once things started getting going, and just with the mobility, I know it's not like super duper ultra mobility, a lot more mobile than a lot of other uh, pe uh, things and the destructive nature of the uh, of the artillery and so on and so forth was just destroying communication so fast. So uh, as the war progressed, it seems that uh, generals and whatnot were cluing in that we have to maybe break up our command structure into smaller units and allow them to uh, take initiative as long as we can give them a general plan or what? Oh. F, there's so much to find out about. Anyways, so you could say what, well, and I'm sorry, it, it, we're in this world, November 1914, everybody's still in like, no, 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 you do this. And it, it's the way I'm going. This guy here, you would say, okay, well, then just go in here and everybody's happy. He can retreat to the nearest, nah, nah, nah that ain't his core. A completely different army for Christ's sakes. This is the Austro-Hungarian Third Army, uh, well, not this guy. Uh, here, okay? This is all Austro-German, or Austro-Hungarian, because it's under their control. The 4th Army. It's actually specifically the 7th Corps. This is, uh, oh, shoot. Um, Offenberg. I can't, uh, Redichevic. Yeah, Chris. 7th uh, seventh, seventh Corps, okay? So that's who he's under control of. I couldn't supply him anyway. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have any supply points because of this uncontested uh, zone of control. Anyways, you go through the whole rigmarole of the chain of the uh, priority list of, okay, well, if you can't retreat here, can you retreat there? Nope, can't retreat there, can you retreat here? Like, you know, the whole list of whatevers. It ends up coming down to, this guy is going to still try to retreat closest to his nearest command center. Remember, these are 20 kilometer wide hexes. Communication sucks. A different army. I'm sorry. He doesn't even potentially know that these guys are there. Um, so I'm retreating them down to here when that happens. So, the, okay. It gets into column attack mode. And what it says is as the this unit retreats to this spot, after the retreat, they must make a column attack. And, of course, I would bring these guys over, as far as I know, because that's right after the retreat, so they've advanced and brought him in. Remember, it's a comment. It took me a while to figure this out because afterwards I was like, do they keep retreat? Or do they keep advancing? I'm like, because that's starting to sound like World War II land. Like, what the hell? You've advanced, like, you've moved in 40 kilometers? And, and it was like, no, no, Chris, it's a column attack. He makes the column attack. These guys are now defenders, which means they're not going to advance after combat. Okay? So they've moved in. Uh, this is what happens with, now with the column attack. Now in a column attack, what ends up happening is this unit now has to make column attacks against all adjacent enemy units. And the enemy adjacent units get to pick their terrain from any of the ones being attacked. And it's all of them. So we're all going to use woods. It, it's the way it works. Then there's some halves and doubles and all kinds of crazy nonsenses. It doesn't matter. But it, because uh, I don't want to get into all the, the modifiers, all I got to say is this in the end, is that these guys are going to surrender. So what ends up happening at the very beginning is I'm going to say that the Austro-German, uh, uh, the Austro-Hungarian KUK, um, uh, I wonder if I should roll for them. Like, that's not fair to say that uh, technically the German... Um, okay, how about this? I'll give one-third chance that the first hit that was inflicted is going to be for, uh, for the Austro-Germans and... Uh, sorry, one-third for the Ger uh, Germans and two-thirds for... The, yeah, I'll roll for that. 
because I uh, what I wanted to do is like figure out who surrenders because that's double the amount of demoralization. So either the German, but pardon me, narratively speaking, yet again, I'm thinking, well, the Germans are going to be shocked beyond belief. Mind you, in the long run, it's going to be a lot of internal, like, what the hell happened here? Um, you know, like, things were looking great, and all of a sudden, come on, you know, I think I get rid of Shemesh, which I did this morning. Ooh, I hope that's not a harbinger. Nope, that's not a good spot. How about that? Uh, it's because you're going uh, to have changed the camera angle since this morning. Okay, so it's going to be one or a two. Uh, the Germans are going to be the first ones to get nailed. Uh, maybe just, that's the way it goes. Um, yeah, why not? Even though part of me is like, oh, they could have been the most resilient and they were, no. Let's just go with it. Third chance. I mean, come on. Oh my God. Maybe yeah, that's, that's even better for the narrative, if you think about it. Somehow the Germans got uh, 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 waylaid, because I, I think you can see the one. Um, uh, got waylaid, then um, the Austro-Hungarians were, were like, holy crap, let's surrender. So they retreat, re surrender, nobody else advances, they're gone, oops. So that means the Germans are, I mean, you know what, I'm going to give, uh, I'm still going to give the two points demoralization to the Germans. Or no, 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 okay, I'll, I'll do it proper, because this is a, yeah, that's right, it would be in the news, because they don't know about the whatever. So I'll just switch it over, I just have to pop in, which means I'm going to give you the, uh, or maybe I'll do it on it, no, I can't really do that. It's, uh, or can I take it off? Uh, yes, I can. I didn't realize I could take it off the, off my kitchen wall thing. So I'll just change this up. Um, I don't know if you can, hold on. I'll zoom out. So anyways, that's what's happened. I think there's going to be a lot of, uh, like I said, this is a lot of controversy, great morale boost for the Russians. Um, they've made, I think, a cause, caused a lot of grief here. We've taken a railway junction. Hold on. I'll uh, zippity dippity up over here. Oh, sorry. It's probably too bright. And then I'll try to show you what the numbers are. You can see this. I'll try that. So Russian decisive victory at the moment. Uh, Central powers are 154 point, uh, demoralization points more than Russia. So I have to change that to Austria. Hungary is going to have 150. Germany will have 322. The Central powers still stay at 472. Russia is at 318. And the magic number is 91. What the hell does that mean? That means somehow... The central powers have to figure out of getting the Russians to accumulate 91, hello, 91 demoralization points by the end of November just to drop the Russian decisive victory down to something like a marginal victory or a strategic victory or, but anyways, all I got to say is, remember I was talking about, uh, I'll bring it down here, you don't have to look at this crazy nonsense, is that, um, remember that, uh, I was saying that you could say that, yeah, the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians, when you look at the map, they're winning the war, uh, sorry, the battles or whatever, but they're not winning the war based on demoralization and the way it's going. But of course, I'm going to continue on with this thing, I'm, you know, as we go on, but just fascinating stuff, man. I love it. Okay, I hope you're having a great time. See you, man.